So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live show. It's getting on a bit now. It's five o'clock, so it's getting a bit dull outside on this Thursday evening in the UK. A bit miserable now. So the light's going a bit ugh. So I'm working in this gorgeous, gorgeous book and I've not had a problem with it, but I've had to think about what I want to use because it's the paper's thin. Um, but I get the best kind of realistic effect normally by using my pastel pencils. So I'm using a bit of pastel, scratching it in, and then I'm uh, manipulating with a damp brush. Um, and I've got a little bit of a buckle, but nothing much. So it means that I can use this method. So I've scratched a little bit of colour about, and I've done every side of the leaf that I think is darker I've put a little bit of colour and then the other one I've put um, the other one will be the equivalent so if I if I colour one in I use it the next time so I'll just zoom in a bit and we can see what I'm doing so I've got my damp rigger on a, a baby wipe that I've just re-wet because it dried. So activate the colour on this side. So I've picked up colour and I'm using it on the other side. Activate the colour on this side. Use it on the other side. Act the colour of it there. Activate the colour on that one and use it on the other side. Sorry, I just had to distract the elf master. So, we we'll just put that in that. there. Come on, elf master. Come and then. Go as well. Come on. And then, baby wipe. Now you could do this and then activate it at a later date, but. Um, you'd have to, it would smudge, so you'd have to put some grease booth paper on it, so. Um, but I could do it like I was doing the other books, is you could scratch the colour in and then do this at a later date. But you would have to put um, tracing paper between. But it's just as nice to scratch this colour and then manipulate. So you've got one leaf that's lighter than the other and I kind of like that idea so this gorgeous book was sent to me by Suzanne and it means I can also do the other colour book which she sent me the epic by Bennett Klein this is another way you can do that so the pages aren't really designed for a lot of water I can't use pencil but I can scratch a bit of pastel dust and then manipulate it so I've got some quite nice colours I've covered chat up sorry guys so I just do this I've made over a hun 500 videos to date <laughs> so I in um, I think I started about a year and a bit ago year and a half ago I think maybe Is it maybe March time so um, 
Uh, I'm not making as many because um, I volunteer at the local abbey. Having said that, I may have to stop because it's getting really difficult for me. So I may have to stop after Christmas. It's just too much, I mean, too much pain. But it's very good for the soul. So we'll have to see how we get on. And on a Wednesday, I play with kittens. <laughs> so I volunteered at the local RSPCA for cats. And I was playing with six kittens yesterday. It was such a bad job, but somebody had to do it. <laughs> but it, um, I just sit and play with these kittens and try to stroke them so they get used to being stroked but they didn't really like it but I had to persevere so it's not really nice picking a kitten up when you know it doesn't want to like it they didn't hiss at me thank goodness um, I think the feral ones outside my daughter said were hissing but once you pick them up they stopped hissing so that was good but we have to get them used to people so that they can be rehomed so my job is to make them like being stroked. <laughs> it's a bit of a hard job, but somebody has to do it. So this is Anse. I make you feel good, do I? <laughs> um, now, I don't have any interference, so I can show you some photographs if my phone's about very quickly. We've had a bit of an alpha cam this morning. Um, he decides that he wants to do lots of things. So, there were two kittens there that actually belonged to somebody. Um, and they were just playing and playing and then she decided that she'd had enough so she kind of just crashed out in her little nest she was the most gorgeous little girl um, bit of a tigger bit of a tigger and then my little bungle the little long haired black one he was crashed out as well so we did a lot of playing yesterday <laughs> we did a lot of playing yesterday um, so I don't know if you can see that but there's there's kind of three cats on here there's one on the top one in the hammock and then one underneath <laughs> so they're just adorable um, and she fell asleep actually in the middle of the floor just collapsed and I thought oh no I'm gonna stand on her so I had to move her so she just went to sleep she was pooped <laughs> She was pooped, but she'd played for about three hours nearly. And then there was a bit bigger one that was playing as well. But it's just a bad job, but somebody has to do it. And then this is Bungle. I fell in love with Bungle. Now, it looks like I'm str struggling, strangling him, but I'm not. Little Bungle was asleep upside down on my knee. And he has huge paws. But he has gungy eyes, and he was had gungy eyes today. So that's my little Bungle. Who has absolutely huge feet. He's long haired. And he just went to sleep upside down on my knee. Curled up on his back and went to sleep. <laughs> uh, because his eyes are a bit gungy there, bless him. And these are my originals. 
when there's an ironing board not an ironing board when it's a cat board <laughs> now these two he he's a bit naughty he beats the little girl up she's filey fluff we found her in filey and he's just a black cat that uh, i rescued as a kitten and he arrived with a little bear um, and he used to say, go get your bear, Sotty, and he goes get his bear and took up and go to bed. And now you do it because he's older. He's like a bit embarrassed. <laughs> so it's a hard job, but somebody has to do it. So these kittens are on the RSPCA Cat Ghoul, G -L -O -L -E, Ghoul, and there's some gorgeous photographs. Um, Cat, RSPCA cat at Ghoul and we have a wonderful website um, so last month Hubby and I went out of course Hubby was on his tea Hubby and I went out for a meal I'm hit, hiding my stick <laughs> so we went out and had a really nice time with everybody um, and of course, this was Alfie last night, snoring. <laughs> Alfie was snoring. And this is my youngest, and the, the Alfie, he gets cradled like a puppy, like a baby. He wants to sit on her knee constantly. He's just a snorry pants. Is he snoring on this one? I think he's snoring. He's just having a big snore. So Hubby and him have a competition. Who wants to snore the loudest? So that was a little bit about the cats. But really pretty kittens. Oopsie, and that's the deaf boy who barks, and he can't hear himself. <laughs> oh dear me. So, we've nearly finished this. I just want some darks there. So, I think it's this one here. So, I had intended on looking up some coloured mushrooms, but this is just the practice. Um, I wanted to see how well it did with a little damp rigger, and we're just about okay. So, I need a couple of browns now, fawns. Um, sepia colours are quite nice. I think I'm going to do in there a bit of a sepia colour, I think. Again, once you've manipulated this, it does turn into quite a nice kind of colour. pale colour and maybe pale on that one as well and then we want some a bit brighter green I think for that one like a may green maybe oh not may green um, this one because it's um And you can just they're very nice sketches so again I can use my baby wipe which I've just popped somewhere so if you just and again it's not a watercolor it's a pastel but two things happen it's extremely well pigmented it's got a lot of pink pigment and less binder it's the nearest thing to pure colour. Pure colour arrives for artists in a dust, almost a dust. So when you scratch colour on here it's almost a dust. So 
it's the nearest thing it has the least amount of binder of all color products and so this is why although it's not a watercolor it reacts with water very similar and that's why a lot of the old masters used to use it because you know, if they had pastels they didn't ha have watercolors they would do sketches and color them with pastel and you want bare, just a barely damp rigor any wetter and you go through your page any drier and it will not activate the color and you'll end up with a bit of color on the top so you're picking color up all the time And then you just have enough colour to manipulate it somewhere else. So thank you for joining me. This is a live show recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. I use pastel pencils when I can't use any strong damp colour. So if you look on the other side you've got a little bit of buckling but very little. And these were very soft colours. I, I didn't put very strong colours on them. These were quite soft. So just pan out a little bit. And it's very quick as well. It's not it's not very it's fairly quick you can get some really nice effects so they are quite pale those and again it's dried the pastel is not a pastel anymore it's a dry watercolor um, so that was just a very quick um, a quick idea so what we could I've left a little berry somewhere so I need the red so I found a berry under here hiding and there was another one oh, there's some there like, hiding under there sometimes you don't see things so I've just got a damp baby wipe a rigger barely damp and it's just manipulate so you don't have to take the color right to the edge because you just don't need to do that and you've got picked up some red so you may as well bob it down to make it a bit stronger now I need um, use this oh no what I use yeah. kind of like this it's, it hasn't got a point on it so oh I found another leaf down there so if you've got some really colour you can just manipulate it a bit and then got a bit of colour on there that you can use because it's quite strong so you've, you're going to have quite a lot of colour so that has taken very little time to do that one now obviously a bigger one is going to take longer I really want to do that one because that's the red one but I told myself um, I have to and that's the practice one that's the one I've just done like death cat one so this one I really wanted to use colors from my little mushroom box uh, b book which seems to have been bogged somewhere so um, I can't actually do any more to this one because I really want to do some really nice realistic colors um, but I'm quite pleased with that it's it's flat um, and it's um, it's a good practice so I've got 
got some way of knowing what colours are going to react. Now there is a colour one for every, there is a colour palette page or sample for every one in the book. So, so um, I do have a colour guide but I'd like to be a bit bolder and use bolder colours so I think I'm going to use some kind of realistic colours to see if I can match them and make them a bit more realistic. Um, and the other one I can use in the same method is Epic, which was another wonderful... Now, I've written a note, something there. Look, what does that say? That says Ink Tense. I wrote some notes on here. That was... Near Colour 2s. I had written some notes on here. I've done a couple. Um, I think I'm going to stick to pastel though, I think. That looks like I've scratched some colour on, so I can manipulate it with a damp brush. So, you can always work in different ways with different papers, because they different colour books. Uh, but these are going to be perfect with my pastels. So thank you, Suzanne, for those. They were gorgeous. Um, and I've just got time. I've got about half an hour. So this particular one, I've been scratching Magical Dawn. I've been scratching colour in and leaving it. So when I go away at the end of the month, um, and I haven't done any more, I put pastel pencils on this one. So what I need to do is put a piece of greaseproof paper or tracing paper between because it will smudge. So all I'm going to do is very similar to the same technique. Um, I'm going to put colours. I do want to have a look for the reds though because I don't have many cherry reds. So, I've got three Crimson Lakes. Now, I actually quite like that. There's Geranium Lake and Crimson Lake. And I've put that one with it because that's crimson as well. Um, obviously, don't my... Ow, sorry, elbows. Ooh, don't have to do that. I could do different coloured mushrooms do any colour I wanted actually couldn't I um, I think they might be red ones these might be different ones they look like bluebells so I might do them bluebell colour oh no they're bluebells so if they're bluebells they're red so I think I'm going to have geranium lake and crimson lake I think I'm going to do a combination of both um so I'm just going to scratch a little bit of colour in, but I'm not going to activate it yet. I'm going to leave it. Um, so I'll just see what this does. I think I might possibly... might do them three colours. So on this one I've got Geranium Lake uh, 1, 2 and 3 but one's like a pinky red one's a peachy red and the other one's a pale pinky red um, so it's giving me a three tone. So the darkest is at the bottom and again we've got this crease here which is a pest Then I've got the next lightest, which is uh, like a coral colour. And the palest one at the top is like a 
that's like a coral so I've got like a peach color so they're red tones but they're not pinky red tones so I need to do this fairly quickly um, and I, I am trying to keep away from those whites but I'll probably use a white Posca pen or gouache or a white acrylic to kind of really boost these up so if I do accidentally go around it's no big deal now there is another way of doing this it's just putting one color at the bottom and then when you manipulate it with a damp brush it gets paler and paler and paler but I kind of like this idea uh, so we've not got any more of these mushrooms nope so they're my colors for that um, bluebells let's have a look for bluebells we've got be on the end of somewhere we've got a violet I might like to do this violet actually so I think ultramarine ultramarine and I think yeah I'm gonna go for three ultramarine colors so this is the vintage set so it's a bit older or original set you know but I got into trouble for that so I'll call it a vintage set so the French ultramarine you've gone I've got a, a bold color a deep color and a faint color so there's three different shades so I would say that was like a, a baby blue and that's a very pale purple and that's French ultramarine again I can't put my hand on that oopsie because um, now you've got to decide you want it deeper at the end or deeper at the top I think I might work darker at the bottom again just scratching a bit of color not being very precise because you don't need to because when you get the paint brush the damp brush when it picks up the color it it becomes a watercolor and so you manipulate it to the lines so you can just scratch a bit of color and you can then manipulate it with a, a smaller brush so you've got more precision with the brush and of course it looks like you've just made it perfect so the next color the middle color so quite a while ago Derwent had a set of 90 pencils pastel pencils they were there were 30 shades and sorry 30 colors and each color had three tints or tones or shades so these are all ultramarine but there is a pale there is a medium and there is a dark um, so dark faint and bold F D and B and then they changed that so most of these colors are in the new set of pastels which look like this and they are set there are 72 so it doesn't look like this but your pardon it looks like This one is Crimson P160. So most of the colors are in there. The difference is these are, I think these are seven millimeters, eight millimeters with a five millimeter strip. And these are seven millimeters with a four millimeter strip. So the strips are a bit smaller. 
and they're a bit stronger. These are softer and powdery. These are stronger. So obviously Derwent had a look and said, people had said, can we not have them as a pure pastel, please? Um, and you've got to be careful because otherwise you rub dust in things. So they didn't want them like that. Um, so Derwent has changed slightly. Now, if you look about, you can still get the original set. Um, and I must admit, I do prefer the, the, the original, but I find them a bit softer. So they kind of just melt into a watercolour, even though technically they are not a watercolour, they are a pastel. And the only thing with this is you've got to remember not to put your hand on it. So I've just put my hand on that. Because this will rub off. It's just pastel. There's no tooth on the paper. But by just manipulating it with a barely damp rigger brush, you can push the colour about and you can make a watercolour. So I just put a bit more colour. So I'm not going to activate it yet. I'm going to leave this, do the next page. And eventually all these colours, all these pages will have colour scratched onto them. But they won't be activated. And then at the end of the month when we go to Ireland, I'm going to take this book and I don't need to take any colour with me because all the colours already in there so there's no neos even though I have neos there's no pastels there's no watercolour pencils everything is here in the book I just need a water brush or some kind of some kind of water brush. I do like the Derwent number one. It's the driest and I like that best for colour books but it's whatever floats your boat. I think these were supposed to be bluebell colours, but I've got mushroom colours now, and I seem to have gone over. So I'll just put the dots in later. And you just want a tiny scratch. You don't really want to see dust. If you see dust and you've got asthma, that's not good. And if you see dust, it means you are wasting your colour. So we've got to be quite so we've just done this it's very quick this it's really quick I should put these away I'm being rather naughty but never mind um, I think I've got spectrum blue so I think this time we're gonna have blue at the ends we've got that silly thing at the end there then we're going to have the medium colour. So you can look through your colours and do exactly the same. You just want to look for a dark and a medium. And a pale. And then you can do exactly the same. 
So all the mushrooms have been done, so I need to put a colour on the mushrooms. So I've got some yellow ochres here. I've got some brown ochres. Again, I've got a medium, a dark and a light. So the light one wants to go here. And then I want the dark one here. And again, I've got to remember now not to put my hand on it because it'll smudge because it's just pastel now, this. It's just pure pastel. So I think the medium one, I might do this one. Again, if it's just a rough scratch, you don't need a lot, really don't need a lot, because and you certainly don't need to go to the edge, because you're going to do that with the brush. Damp rigger is going to manipulate all that colour where it wants to go. Now, I don't normally think of colour too much here because. It's a fantasy, it's not reality. Whereas the mushroom book um, that Joanna sent, the uh, mushrooms of the world, I want those to be more reality, so I want to have a look at colours first. Um, so we've got a mousey, little mouse. Um, oh, we have the amethyst colour. If I have it in the pastels, let's have a look. I have all my pastels out. Yes, I've got I've got dark violet, and I've got um, so again these crystals. Um, We've got a pale facet, we've got a medium fat, oops, facet, I've probably sharpened these, oh I haven't sharpened them, oh, somebody, uh, somebody must have dropped them, they all look broken, that's not nice, and then we'll have a dark one. a lot of colour and these if you dissolve them in um, a, a well a watercolour well in here you will have a wash so you can do washes with pastels and that's how I knew that they were water soluble because we used to make washes with them so if you break a piece off for goodness sake don't throw it out it's going to be magical And again, you don't have to do it exact because by the time we've picked up this colour, 
we can manipulate it as we want and we will have a lot of purple the trick is to do every other one but the smallest amount of colour is going to go a long way so even if you forget some of these little triangles it's fine because we're going to have enough to do them so we've got a couple of houses then we've got some green I kind of like a, an olive green I think yeah I've got green umber it's the other green we had I kind of like green umber so what I'm going to do is just scratch a bit of colour at the bottom and what that's going to do is give me a highlight so it's going to give me a very pale colour from quite a dark colour is that one but never mind sometimes you can't always see so thanks for joining me guys hope everybody's okay it's uh, just nearly dusk here miserable cold put the fire on put the telly on glass of wine feet up moment He's not far away. <laughs> My daughter will be home from college starving, bless her. So let me have a look. And then do these at this side. Oops, again, I knew that was broken. I was hoping not. So I've obviously dropped it, or somebody's dropped these. But again, can't waste this colour. If it's a if it's a Derwent watercolour, a Derwent ink tense, or a Derwent um, pastel piece of pa it's water soluble. You can make a wash of it, and that will make a beautiful coloured wash for um, a field or a grey. Absolutely amazing. So I do have a little box that I keep them all in. So I'm not overly stressed that I've broken them. There's another one there. Look, that pink. That would make a very pink. If I did a large red rose, that would be the pale wash I put on first. Going back to watercolours that we did earlier today. Oh, hi, Cheshire Cat. Welcome to Bernie's Designs. <laughs> we had a lot of cats yesterday. I was playing with kittens all day. <laughs> and this little one when he was asleep he looked like a Cheshire cat um, he and when he came he's actually been adopted now he couldn't walk somebody somebody put them in a box and if they don't exercise they can't walk I'd like to get my hands on them look at it and she couldn't walk because her muscles hadn't developed because she was in a small box but we think they're breeding them as Bengal tigers Bengal cats but she's smiling like a Cheshire cat but she plays quite normally and she has to be locked up when it's feeding time because she she will eat forever and she had this huge belly this little tiny kitten had this biggest fattest belly but she's smiling look isn't she gorgeous? Oh yes, Suzanne, there's a lot of a lot of ways we can. So she's smiling. Isn't she adorable? I woke her up to stroke and she was purring at me. But I'd played with them all for a good few hours while the girls went outside to, to clean the other ones out. But Fancy's trying to put her in a box so she had no muscles, the back legs, so she couldn't walk. So there are some not very nice people around. I'd like to put them in a box and not let them walk around.
but she's perfectly alright, but she's just never stops eating. Isn't she adorable? And she's smiling. She's got this big smile. She actually fell asleep in the middle of the floor and I was frightened I'd fall on her. So I picked her up and I put her in the little cocoon. And she never moved. But she's absolutely adorable. And she's with another one that's very similar in pattern. And she played as well. So we had a wonderful time. And I have a terrible job, but I tired out. Oh, it wasn't that one. There was one, a picture where there was three cat, three kittens. So we have her in the nest, asleep. There's Bungo underneath, the little long-haired long black one. And then his brother at the top. Little socks, because he's got white socks. So I had the horrible job of playing with six kittens until they were pooped. <laughs> they were so poop they just collapsed on the floor just where they were they were so tired because I'd played and played and played and played and played <laughs> no we did it I don't know how she did it I mean at first they thought they were gonna have to take amputate the legs the vet thought but with the love love and love and affection she's just she was the terror so it's my job to play with the others. The other ones were very skittish. And so I have to play with them and stroke them and make them sit on my knee and play with them with toys so that other people will adopt them. It's a terrible job, but somebody just has to do it. So on a Wednesday, I play with kittens and cats for four hours. <laughs> That's how I ended up with Betsy. And there was another cat that's not very happy either but I didn't manage to get outside because I was a bit poorly yesterday so I just stayed in and decided to play with the kittens and as I say it's a horrible job but somebody has to do it and so as I say I've, I've made 500 videos 500 and some so far in about a year even a bit I think I've been making them and so, I'm not doing too badly. You've got to remember not to put your hand on this pastel because it's basically a pastel now. Until I activate it with water, it's a pastel. Um, I'm just going to scratch a little bit. Not much because this is a very strong colour, this. This is terracotta. Uh, but I just thought that would be quite nice to do the towers, the castle towers. They look a bit like a castle. But if I do it here, by the time I've manipulated it, it'll be a, come like a watercolour, so it'll look quite nice, that. Um, I might just do a rusty key as well, I think. And then the top layer can have a highlight on it. So you never need to sharpen your points, your pencils to a sharp point because we just don't need to. I think we'll have a little grey mouse. I'm just going to do a little brown. Oh no, I've just found a brown. I've just found a, a chocolate colour. I think we're going to have a little chocolate mouse. So, so we'd have pink ears. Um, he'd have a bit of dark round here. Now I have three shades of chocolate because, again, this is the the... I can't say original because I got a roasting for that. This is the first set of Dermot pastels that Dermot brought out. And they had them differently named um, and some different shades and the pigment slightly different. They're a bit softer. Well, I can't, uh, I can't tell you how many we have. In, I didn't think in Ghoul we had so many cats. They're just, they're just hundreds and hundreds of cats and kittens. Um, I think it's because people don't kind of get them spayed and so they just kind of reproduce. I think they can have three or four litters a year, so there's, you know, it's going to be a lot of cats. So I'm just going to put a bit of shading in here. And I'm really not 
taking it to the edge because I don't want to. And um, this is the chocolate darkest colour. So again, in the new set of Derwent pastel pencils, they would be called different things, different colours. But there's a very dark brown. There's a mid-tone chocolate cocoa coloured or cinnamon. And then there's a very pale, very pale um just barely barely brown i would say so i think we'll have pale feet and a tail so i do have a pink i wanted a soft pink i've got all my pencils out so i've been rather naughty so Again, just a little bit of colour because I want that to be soft and a bit on the nose. And I will have a pretty blue eye. And green emeralds. And I do have a hooker's green. I have an emerald green. So I think I'm going to do the beads emeralds. And again, I'm not attempting to get this everywhere. I am just scratching the tiniest bit of colour. And then the brush will do all the work for me. So she's got a set of beads around here as well. Um, I'm not sure if these are gems. They could be emeralds, couldn't they, I think. And again, I don't mind if I've missed some of them because there will be colour on the brush once I have coloured quite a few of them. And I'm using just one colour emerald. I have three, but I'm using one. she can have oh a bright red bow but I think it's gonna turn into a pale colour that these can be rubies I need some roof colours, so I've got a I've got a grey there. I think I quite fancy that grey, French grey. It's not too dark. Oops, sorry, it's not too dark. <laughs> no, Suzanne, no. <laughs> it is a good set, though. I have to say, it is a good set. Especially if you're using it for watercolour, you don't need all the colours. You can get away with just a few. Um, I think I might just put a little bit of a, a purple on there. Kind of fancy a little bit of colour. Again, just a bit of a scratch because the... the, the, the what I'm going to do with those... Um, I think I might do a bright green, hooker's green. But again, I think I'm just going to put the tiniest bit of colour at the bottom. So we're going to have a deep bottom colour, but it's going to go to the palest of the pale greens. And that's what the damp rigger does. So it's very similar, but opposite what the chameleon pens do. Chameleon pens go light to dark what we do is we take a rigger and we make dark to light because it slowly releases the cut the water the dampness very slowly bit by bit every time you move it now when you use a watercolor you get the big rush of color and water all at once and that's why you use a water brush 
for watercolour paper because you want that gorgeous colour to mix with all that water and make some really pretty patterns and to have a seamless kind of carry on but you can get the same effect with a rigger just a damp rigger and a small amount of colour which is perfect for our colour books now just having a spot of bother with my hand So it's nearly time for me to pop off. <laughs> so thank you for joining me and thank you for watching on YouTube. and Thank you for subscribing. If you have anything you want to see again or anything you want to, you think would be interesting, let me know and I will try and show you how I do it. I make everything up mostly as I go along because I have a short term memory. So my watercolouring earlier may be completely alien to anybody. <laughs> so apologies. It's just I manipulate things for colour books. Um, but I'm going to try and do a little bit more. Ow! <laughs> Sorry, I keep uh, bringing my elbow on my drawers. My elbows have got arthritis in them. They don't like to be banged. <laughs> so I've got a little bit of colour scratched really, really roughly. And not to the edge at all. But all that colour is just going to melt are going to melt but you can do this with watercolour pencils you can do it with ink tents you can do it with ink tents blocks you can do it with pastels you can do it with a cheap set of pastels exactly the same you're just scratching a little bit of colour um, I was going to do that one of these with pastels. Now one thing I can't do with this particular one is shut because it definitely will go on to the other side. So I have some tracing paper somewhere. And I think tracing paper is probably the best. Or grease proof paper or baking parchment what you used to line cake tins with. I don't know, put it somewhere it somewhere safe so safe I can't find it um, I have found an old piece this is what I've used for my coloring um, so I can put that in here and I can shut that and it's going to be fine. So there are quite a few pieces of paper in between each one because um, this one is watercolour pencils, this one is Caran d'Ache. So all I'm doing is, is scratching um, water-based pencil or crayon into this book and then I'll be taking just the book leaving all the pencils all the neos all the watercolors all the ink tents all of them at home and I will just be taking this now I will probably take a little rigger because of the pastels but everything else will be with the Derwent number one um, in fact I probably will just take a Derwent number one brush with me um, and they are in they sell them in sets of three one two and three but I like the number one which is about seven or eight pounds but it's the driest one if you dry it on a damp baby wipe it becomes the driest so you can just about get away with it without buckling it too much so that was my page for magical dawn with some pastel pencils scratched in ready for my my trip away. Thank you for watching.